Hello and welcome to another Art of Learning Small Town Business. Tom Eagleoff, your host. Happy to have you along with me. And uh, if it's your first time to the channel, why not subscribe? Hit the notification bell. You'll always be notified whenever we put up another podcast. And uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to uh, learn about or uh, what challenges you might have. We'll be happy to happy to help you out with those. <laughs> Today, I want to talk about something that's critical both in business and in life, and that is success, or in this case, we're going to talk today about failure. Will your business fail? Will you fail in life? Because let's face it, there are a lot of things out there that are set up to make you fail. Uh, all as you uh, go towards your goals, and uh, start your business and get it off the ground or even your life your working life and there's always going to be challenges in your life and we want to tackle those today so we're going to talk about three reasons for failure three reasons for failure i want to start first of all with full disclosure full disclosure uh there's no course for this um I'm not selling anything. Uh, there's no 9995 course to get you through the art of learning small town business. Um, so I want to make that clear off the bat. All the information I'm going to give you is free and hopefully it'll help you. If it will, then by all means, put it to work. If not, then uh, ignore it and go on to something that will work for you. So that's what we want to talk about today. Uh, also in this description below you'll find a uh, link to my books at Amazon and as we all know Amazon you can return anything that you don't like so if you do uh, purchase my book and find it's not helpful uh, by all means you can return it for a full refund and they'll be happy to take it back so we hope that uh, maybe you'll explore go over and take a look at it on Amazon uh, you can read inside the book a little bit see if it's something will help you out the other thing I want to talk to you about is if, if you would like to make podcasts like this or videos like this, uh, I use pi, uh, I use Streamline uh, to do that. StreamYard, sorry, not Streamline. <laughs> it is Streamline, but it's StreamYard and it works great. It's really simple to use. It's easy to set up. You don't have to download anything to your computer. Uh, it works uh, flawlessly, seamlessly, and uh, it's uh, it's great. And um, you know, we hope that you will take advantage of. There's a free version in the description below, uh, so go check that out if you're going to get serious about making uh, videos or podcasts or whatever. Then uh, Streamyard is, in my estimation, the way to go. So check that out as well. All right, let's get into what we want to talk about today. Three reasons for failure. These these can be failure in life, and they can also be failure in business, but. That is the biggest fear that business owners have, particularly a new business owner. Can I make this happen? Will this work? Will my idea uh, have a leg? So can I make a living doing this? And that's the question that plagues most new business owners and actually derails them from the very beginning of uh, their very starting point. Uh, they don't even get in the starting blocks because the, the fear of failure is so pronounced that uh, you know there's an old saying: fear of loss is more is is more powerful than expectation of gain. So staying where you are is comfortable. Moving out of your comfort zone that's an issue, and that's what we want to talk about today. And the first thing we want to talk about is something I call forced discipline. Now, what is forced discipline? Well, if you think about it. We're, we're almost programmed uh, to fail both in life and business because of forced discipline. And what that means is that from the time we're born until the time we become an adult, all of our decisions are made for us by someone. You know, our parents make our decisions, teachers make our decisions, uh, a boss, or if you're in the military, you know, all these decisions are made by someone else. Now you make minor ones, of course, but things to do with big ticket items, big money, things like that, 
uh, those are always made by someone else, someone in authority, uh, someone over you. So when the time comes for the that new business owner to take that, that uh, or put that business hat on and you're the principal decision maker and whatever you do can affect your business very negatively, not only today or next week, but five years from now, that's a big responsibility and a lot of folks uh, aren't up to it. So that's why we want to talk about it today. That forced discipline, you need to, you need to realize that, yeah, these decisions were made for you back in the day, but now you're an adult, um, you know, you may have bought your own first car, uh, you might have rented your own first apartment, or maybe you buy, bought your own house. So you have made some, some decisions that affect your life. But when we go into business, every decision is critical, particularly in the first five years. That's when the majority of businesses fail is in the first five years. And we don't want to see that happen. So keep in mind that decisions are easier if you have information like your business plan. That's why a business plan is so important because it forces you to think about things. It forces you to sit down, write them out and say, okay, will this work? How am I going to make this happen? Uh, where am I going to have my business? Is it going to be a home-based business? Is it going to be in a storefront? Is it going to be a warehouse? Where is my business going to be? How am I going to run it? How am I going to, do I need employees? How am I going to get a bank loan if I need one? All of these things will be detailed in your business plan and that will help you make these decisions that you haven't had to make in the past. So that's why a business plan is really, really important. Uh, you can get help uh, writing a business plan uh, from score.org, uh, score.org, S-C-O-R-E.org. Uh, they're free, uh, they're a government agency. Volunteers who have been in your industry will help you write a business plan. Uh, the uh, Small Business Development Center, you can look those up at Small Business Administration, SBA.gov. They also have sample business plans and things you can go by. So there's there are ways to make these decisions that are gonna help you out. You're gonna be able to do this, you know? So uh, information is what gives you power. The more information you have about something, the more, the more uh, decision making becomes easier. So keep that in mind. Business plan, gotta have it. Forced discipline, it will overcome forced discipline. Next, we want to talk about associations. Now, what are associations? I'm not talking about groups you join. I'm talking about the guy sitting on the bar stool next to you. And it's, it's always amazed me that people will put emphasis on what somebody on a bar stool will tell you about your business, that they have no clue what you've studied. They have no clue what's in your business plan. They have no clue about your very, your industry at all, but yet you're going to sit there and take their advice as to whether this business will work or will not work. So don't do that. Um, if, if I want to learn to play golf, I'm not going to ask a bowler or a tennis player how to play golf. I'm going to go seek out someone who knows how to play golf. Never ever ask information from anyone who's not qualified to give it to you person who's giving you the information has to be qualified to do it. They have to have been in your industry. They have to have some knowledge of what you want to do. And if there's a secret to success, it's simply finding someone who is doing what you want to do successfully and do what they do. If you're starting a furniture business, for example, uh, get online, look for some furniture makers, uh, individuals in other cities and um, contact them, uh, email them, uh, Facebook them, whatever, and see if they'll help you out. What, uh, how do they get started? What do they, what kinds of wood uh, do they use? What kind of lays do they use? What kind of uh, varnishes, finishes, paints, uh, drills, uh, glue, whatever. Uh, get the right information from people who are qualified to give it to you. It's going to save you a lot of time and money in the long run. And it's also going to prevent that failure system 
because once you have information about paints, glues, varnish, um, and all the other uh, things that go into making furniture, then you can decide, hey, do I have the money to buy this stuff? Or when can I buy this stuff? When is this all gonna, when is all, all this gonna fall into place? Can I start part-time with simple tools and move on to bigger tools later on? That's why the business plan and these things will help you. So associations associate with people who are successful, but only those who are able to advise you because they're qualified to advise you. The third reason for failure we want to talk about is vision. Vision is very important because right now, if you're starting your business, your, your business might be no more than a card table and a telephone in the corner of your bedroom. I mean, that's your business right now. You've got to be able to see that business as it's going to be, not as it is now. Do you think Bill Gates sitting in the garage uh, figuring out Microsoft, do you think he thought it would always be in that garage? Or Steve Jobs and, and Wozniak when they were borrowing uh, computer parts from Hewlett Packard, did they always think the simple little computer they were making is going to be the top of the line? And Elon Musk, I mean, the, it, it goes on and on. You know, did Zuckerberg think that Facebook was just going to be at Harvard? This is this is critical to your business success. You've got to see your business as it's going to be. And you've got to feel that in your heart. You've got to act it. You've got to walk like you're successful. You've got to talk like you're already successful. You've got to you've got to project that feeling that your business is where it's going to be in five years, 10 years, 15 years, not where it is today. So vision, very important. For example, if you're a parent, your kids crawling around on the on the floor, not on the coffee table, uh, every decision you make will affect that child as uh, as they grow to adulthood. And it's the same with your business. You've got to see that vision of what you want the end result to be. I want a, I want a productive, successful adult uh, in my child. But what I want to do is I want a successful business when it reaches adulthood as well. So I want to do, I, I, I've got to give myself the mindset that I'm going to be successful no matter what. My business plan says I'm going to be successful. I've talked to the right people and associations. I've got advice from the right people who are going to advise me. And I have the vision to see this business 10 years down the road, 15, 20 years, whatever. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to be successful no matter what. And that's those are the three things you've got to overcome in order to be successful, in my opinion. Now, there are a lot of others, as we as we talked about earlier. If you remember earlier, we talked about this, reaching your goals. And there's going to be a lot of things along the way that are going to, that are going to try to derail you. Uh, some of the worst, going back to associations, your parents will try to protect you from failure. Your friends, uh, they're, going to, they're going to sabotage you because if you're successful, they don't have an excuse any longer for not being successful. All of these three things, forced uh, force discipline, associations, vision, are the speed bumps and roadblocks that are going to stop you from achieving your goal and being successful in the long run. We hope this podcast has been helpful to you. If it has, by all means, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You'll always be notified when we have another podcast. And uh, by the way, leave a comment. Anna, and uh, what are your challenges? What do you want us to talk about? What, will you, what would you like to see us cover? Is it marketing? Is it advertising? Is it promotion? Uh, any of those things, we do all of those. Do any of them, uh, certainly. We can do uh, public relations, advertising, researching, social media, communications, networking, all of those things. And we'll be happy to help you out with any of those things. So. We, uh, again, hope you enjoyed the podcast and uh, don't forget to subscribe, like us, and we'll see you on the next podcast.